Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Final conversation this morning uh, is on world uh, workplace safety. And health. Uh, it's a happy world day for safety and health at work. The annual day is observed on the 28th of April and raises awareness on the prevention of occupational accidents and diseases. Here's a look at what it's all about. Annual World Day for Safety and Health at Work is observed on the 28th of April to raise awareness on the prevention of occupational accidents and diseases. It is a campaign intended to focus attention on creating and promoting a safety and health culture that can help reduce the number of work-related deaths and injuries. The International Labour Organization started observing the day in 2003 in the face of rising incidences of workplace accidents and diseases. It is estimated that 500 million people suffer from such hazards annually and 2.3 million succumb to the accidents and work-related illnesses. That is an average of 6,000 deaths every day. This year, the World Day for Safety and Health at Work focuses on leveraging the elements of an occupational safety and health system as set out in the Promotional Framework for Occupational Safety and Health Convention 2006. The International Labour Organization will take this opportunity to raise awareness and stimulate dialogue on the importance of creating and investing in resilience occupational safety and health systems. It will also be drawing on both regional and country examples in mitigating and preventing the spread of COVID-19 at the workplace. In Nigeria, there are more than 164,000 confirmed cases of the disease. This indicates an urgent need for companies to observe and follow the requirements for the World Day for Safety and Health at Work. Each of us is responsible for stopping deaths and injuries at work. The government is responsible for providing the infrastructure, laws and services necessary to ensure that workers remain safe and that enterprises flourish. This includes the development of a national policy and program. It also includes a system of inspection to enforce compliance with occupational safety and health legislation. Employers are responsible for ensuring that the work environment is safe and healthy. Workers are responsible for their own protection and that of others. It's also their responsibility to know their rights and participate in the implementation of preventive measures. Work hard, observe all COVID-19 safety precautions and stay safe. Happy World Day for Safety and Health at Work. Happy World Day for Safety and Health at Work. And uh, we're wishing that to all Nigerians and everyone who's uh, watching us this morning. We'll say good morning to our guest, Michael Ogu, who's a HR expert. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, good Thank morning. Thank you so much and good morning. Morning to you. Um, uh, this is not a very familiar um, you know, discussion around Nigerian workplaces. Uh, mostly because a lot of Nigerians are used to, you know, just whatever it is that they see, they take at the office. So, so let's start with talking about how much we lack in our Nigerian, um, you know, work environment. How much, you know, do Nigerian workers um, lack with regards health and safety uh, and the respect, you know, for Nigerian uh, workplaces? Uh, okay, thank, thank you so much for that question. And I would say that the awareness, like you rightly said, it's on an average basis. So if you take a workplace that has about 20 employees, for example, maybe about five to eight of them will be aware of safety principles, safety measures, and um, safety procedures. However, we have a lot of manufacturing companies in Nigeria that are very safety conscious and you know very safety aware for example you have nigerian bottling company plc you have several bottling company plc where before you enter these factories you are given a safety briefing and then you are given you know personal protective equipment before you enter the factory however we also have you know a couple of safety guidelines enshrined in our labor and employment laws like the factory act the Employee Compensation Act, just to mention a few. Okay. Um, well, I've been to a couple of those factories, like you mentioned, and y yes, I agree that those things uh, uh, do exist. But, you know, one thing that I also believe is, is lacking, I mean, aside these companies, they all have 
um, international head office, um, um, you know, branches, you know, where I believe, you know, those safety um, rules and regulations trickle down to their offices here in Nigeria. Aside, uh, you know, that, are Nigerians aware, really, of what, uh, you know, a safe working environment should be like? Do Nigerians demand enough of those um, a, a safe working environments? Thank you so much. And to be very honest, I will say that very few Nigerians are aware of their rights in terms of safety. That is not to say that they cannot demand for a safe working environment, but because their awareness is low, a lot of them cannot make those demands on their employers. And when the introduction was reeled out about the World Health Safety Day, as you know, enshrined by the ILO, you will realize that COVID-19 has been classified as an occupational disease in the recent reports on occupational safety and health as released by the ILO. So the awareness is very low. However, both government employers and HR practitioners and even safety professionals have a lot of work to do to carry this awareness and let people know that they have a right to a safe working environment. All right, Mr. Ogu, I, I want us to, you know, break this down for the layman to understand. When we're saying that Nigerian workers and even workers all over the world have a right to health and safety at work, what exactly do we mean? Could you help us break this down into, you know, the basics? What would it mean for there to be health and safety at work? Okay, thank you so much. Let's start from our local laws. The Nigerian Labor Act puts it that the employer has a duty to provide a safe working environment. What that means is that the environment must be safe. The tools that the employer uses to work does not expose them to hazard risk. You know, also the employer must put in place insurance you know, policies that will ensure that if there is a workplace accident, such employee who is involved in an accident must be taken care of. Also, there is the duty on the employer to ensure that there is continuous training, continuous enlightenment around safety rules, safety procedures, and finally, the provision of personal protective equipment. These are just some of the basics. All right, and, and um, you know, go back to when you talk, spoke about COVID-19 because it obviously opened up a lot of conversations about the safety of health workers. Um, and of course, uh, has uh, changed, you know, I believe a lot of the way that we um, uh, work here in Nigeria inclusive um, has also opened up the space uh, for uh, remote working and for people to be able to work from home. Um, and so how would you say that, you know, the Nigerian workspace has been able to adapt uh, to have a safer working environment in the face of a pandemic? Thank you so much for that question. And so when we look at the COVID-19 pandemic, it happened on all of us in Nigeria. Even globally, there was no playbook for any company to adapt. So most of the things that we began to do as employers and employees were things that we did as we learned to adapt. However, let me put it on record that a lot of employers began to change their mode of working and they adapted almost immediately. So I can tell you some of my colleagues who work in other companies have rotational shifts. So it's not everyone that comes to work every day. And for those who are on site, social distancing has been observed. They are given personal protective equipment like nose masks. And for those who work in factories, they are given protective gloves and all of that. So a lot of organizations really adapted if we take a scale of one to 10, we can say eight out of every 10 organization has adapted. Even some of the traditional organizations who said remote working is impossible, have had to use technology to make their work more efficient and effective. 
So you mentioned a bit earlier in our conversation some laws we have in Nigeria, you know, that provides for health and safety of Nigerian workers. But in terms of, you know, how it applies in the practical world, how would you rate the level of compliance to these laws, you know, especially by Nigerian employers, you know, to their staff? Okay, thank you for that question. And I would rate the level of compliance a five out of a 10. The reason is because safety is a worldwide phenomenon, regardless of what the primary mode of business the organization is involved in. So I've been to a lot of factories and some of them observe safety regulations. But if you go to you know, other companies who are not involved in manufacturing, they barely have safety protocols. So the level of compliance is a five out of 10. Can it be better? Yes. Can, can, uh, can Nigerians, uh, what kind of things can Nigerians sue their employ, uh, employers for? Um, in what ways, you know, would you say a Nigerian can take advantage of the labor laws and seek um, um, uh, justice if he feels like his life was threatened in the workplace or, you know, his safety was threatened in the workplace? Can you give us examples? Okay, one of the examples I would like to cite is in the Workmen's Compensation Act, which is now the Employee Compensation Act, revised 2010. There's what we call mental stress or mental duress. And so an employee can actually sue their employer if they feel that they have been put under mental duress or mental stress. So that's one of the examples enshrined in our laws. Of course, there are also other things the employee can sue for, workplace accidents that happen on site, and then also accidents that happen when the employee is on his way to work. So these are some examples of, of cases where an employee can ask for compensation or go to court. So duress. Yes, I, 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 I took a look at the hmm. uh, employee compensation for workplace injury in Nigeria and legal remedies. So indeed, I was really surprised to see that, you know, an employee can actually sue a company, uh, you know, if they don't do this, they're actually entitled to compensation if they, you know, get in an accident on their way to work, you know, on their way to get lunch, you know, if they've been put under mental stress. But I want to really ask about the applicability of these laws. Because in a situation where an employer would, you know, dare to tell an employee, you know, this month we're going to pay all of you half salaries, you know, and you can do nothing about it. What really, you know, can an employee do about that? So um, that's a very dicey question. But let me also let you know that the National Industrial Court of Nigeria, which is the superior court of reckoning, has actually has judgments on issues that you have raised in this question. There have been awards of people who had proven cases of you know, mental duress. There have also been cases of people who have been compensated for accidents and all of that. Now, coming to the issue of you know, salary cuts, an employer cannot just um, cut salaries, you know, arbitrarily or unilaterally, you know, they need to engage their employees to say, this is what is happening in the business. What would you suggest we do? Because there is a contract of employment and that contract of employment dictates what happens and how the employment relationship, you know, proceeds. So if the employer wants a salary cut, they need to engage their employees. So that, that's, that's the way forward. All right. Lastly, uh, for me, can, can a, uh, an employee um, seek compensation if he or she is sexually assaulted in the workplace and the company doesn't protect them or anything like that? You know, how, how do these laws protect um, employees from sexual harassment and assault? Yes, so um, when we go back to the ILO convention that was referenced um, when the introduction was read that Nigeria is a signatory to the ILO and so a lot of the ILO conventions have been ratified by Nigeria and the National Industrial Court, which is the Court of Superior Reckoning, has been empowered 
to import international best practices when it comes to determining cases around sexual harassment, victimization, bullying, retaliation, and all of that. So yes, if an employee has proof, such an individual can seek redress at the National Industrial Court of Nigeria. All right, so Mr. Ogu, basically like the summary of what we said today is that you know, Nigerians or workers, even globally, have a right to, you know, their health and safety at the workplace. And that they even need to go a step further to research and find out, you know, what their rights are. I mean, they need to know what they're entitled to, what compensation they deserve, and all of that. And also important for them to seek redress in the court of law when their rights are breached. I mean, that's basically what we're saying, isn't it, Mr. Ogu? Yes, please. All right. All right. Fantastic. Um, thank That's you very much for your time. You're a human resource expert. Uh, thanks for speaking to us today. Thank you so much for having me. All, All right. right. Uh, Wednesday, April 28th is the World Day for you know, Workplace Health and Safety. Read up on the laws. You know what you're entitled to in the workplace. Um, like you said, don't let your employers just arbitrarily just cut your salaries, you know, without you know due explanation and, also and things like that. Sexual yes, mental stress. You know, there's some of the things that you know a lot of Nigerians uh, have to deal with. Uh, I know people who have to um, continue to fight off um, MDs and general managers and you know um, people higher you know in higher positions in the office who continue to make sexual um, um, advances uh, towards them mm -hmm. and um, when they complain the you know company does nothing how you know, many so, people can even complain you know yeah, you hide you know, in because, shame you want to save your job yeah, all these all considerations that. so there's a, there's a lot you know that Nigerians need to learn to demand a safer work environment and stress man plus TV Africa uh, needs to unstress me <laughs> Anyway, thanks a lot for, 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 for staying with us all through um, this Wednesday morning. It's been a very interesting uh, time, and we hope that you enjoyed it. If you missed out on any of our conversations this morning, quickly join us on our social media platforms at Plus TV Africa, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. Yes, thank you very much for keeping it to date with us. I am Aneta Felix. And I am Osaogi Ogboa. See you at nine.